In this video, we're gonna show you how to replace the rear brake backing plate on your Dodge Ram, located right here behind your brake rotor. Using our 7-8 socket, we're gonna head loosen and remove our lug nuts. With the lug nuts off, we can go ahead and remove our wheel. Using a 10 millimeter socket, we're gonna remove the two slider pin bolts on your brake caliper. I'm gonna use a flathead screwdriver and I'm gonna gently pry on this here. This is gonna slightly compress the piston on our caliper. Go ahead and work that caliper off. I'm gonna set that up out of the way. I'm gonna use a securing strap here. To hold this caliper back. We don't want this caliper to fall and then cause extra pressure or tugging on the flex hose here that can damage that. Remove our brake pads. Using a 21 millimeter socket, go ahead, loosen and remove this bolt and the one up above. And when you remove this upper bolt, you wanna hold onto the caliper bracket as that will fall off. Remove the bolt and the bracket, set them aside. Go ahead and grab your rotor. We'll pull that off and set that aside. With the rotor removed, you can see a spring here and right underneath, you can see a little star adjuster. We're going to rotate that down what this is gonna do is going to thread the adjuster inward, allow our shoes to come inboard, and give us a little bit more adjustability to go ahead and get in, remove all of the pieces holding these in. Now inside here is a spring retainer or a metal clip, and then there's a pin here that goes through it that goes through the shoe and, in, and out through the backing plate here. I'm gonna go ahead and twist this pin and unlock it like so. So there's one pin there, and we're gonna get one on the forward mounted shoe. And there's the other pin. Get to remove those clips. Let's go ahead and remove our upper spring. I'm gonna use our tool here with our notch in it. Go behind the spring. I'm going to unhook that. And then once that's separated, Go ahead and get our adjuster out. Now remember this came out with the adjuster wheel facing the rear of the vehicle. And on the bottom side here, connecting the two shoes, there's two springs. We're gonna go ahead and use our tool here with that notch in it to go ahead and push that lower spring out, dislodging it. We're gonna use a pry bar, get it up behind our brake shoe here. I'm gonna go ahead and pry this out. I want to go ahead and separate this here. What we're doing is we're dislodging it from its anchoring point here, as well as the, the parking brake lever uh, bracket here. Again, do the same for this side here. With these loose, we should be able to get inside here and disconnect our springs. I'm gonna use some needle nose locking pliers here. I'm gonna go ahead and 
want to make sure these are nice and tight. I'm going to grab that spring and go ahead and unhook it. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and run to the back side of the spring. The back side over here and get that spring disconnected. I'm going to do it the same way. and remove this spring here. Remember when removing your springs, the longer part or the springless part of the spring faces towards the front of the vehicle. I'm gonna reach on the back side of this spring here. Disconnect that. Using our half inch socket, we want to go ahead, loosen and remove our differential cover bolts. Now you want to have a catch can or a bucket underneath to collect the gear oil that's going to come out of the differential. Top four, I'm going to just loosen. Now at this point here, the reason for leaving this here, we're gonna pop this open, we're gonna pry it. The bolts are gonna hold the cover in place and we're gonna let this go ahead and slowly drain out. of these bolts. I'm going to remove that cover and we'll set that aside. Now at this point here we have the vehicle in neutral. We want to go ahead and rotate our ring gear. We want to go ahead and rotate our drive shaft and what we're looking for is this bolt right here. We want to get loosen that bolt and remove that. By rotating our drive shaft, we're able to bring this carrier unit around. We want to go ahead and loosen and remove this pin bolt here. Uh, that is going to be a 5 16 We're going to use our wrench. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this so that we can get that bolt out. Now this pin here will come out. When that comes out, the carrier gears are going to come out with it as well. Now we can safely leave the gears in place, the spider gears. They'll hold each other in there for now. Now the axle itself comes through at this point right here, the driver's side axle. And if I push on the axle inward, you can see that move, see that move there. Now there's a C-clip on here that we now need to remove off of this. It actually locks the unit, uh, locks the axle in place. So once we pull the C-clip out, we can go ahead and pull the axle out from the brake side. Now you want to grab the axle and you want to carefully pull that out. 
Careful not to damage the seal. And go ahead and set that axle aside. Along the outside of the driver's side frame rail, you're gonna find your parking brake or e-brake cable system right here. And there's a junction right here. Now this cable here goes to the back wheel. What we wanna do is we're gonna pull down on this. I'm gonna pair, take a pair of locking pliers and lock that right there. I want to go ahead and disconnect our cable end or our barrel end from the rest of the cable system. Separate that like that. Once you have that barrel end disconnected, release that, let that cable relax. We're going to use a small pry bar here and on the back we have our e-brake cable going into this little bracket. Without tearing the rubber boot here, the protective boot, we're going to go and we're going to move this e-brake lever, the actuator. Pull the cable down. Now with the e-brake cable disconnected, go ahead and pull the unit out, set that aside. Now that we have our axle out, we're going to use our 516 socket and remove these two bolts right here. And remove the plate. We're going to take our rubber plug, insert that on the back side of this plate. Now that we have our upper plug in, install your rubber actuator boot here. Once we have our rubber pieces inserted, go ahead and line this up. Install our two bolts and we'll snug those down. I'm gonna clean our e-brake actuator. I'm gonna use your bristle brush or wire brush. Clean this up. And we clean this up. I'm gonna apply some grease in here to make sure that this is lubricated. I'm gonna go ahead and insert our unit into the rubber boot. I'm gonna make sure that this hook is facing towards the front as well as this notch. Put that eyelet inside. Install the back side of your e-brake hook here. I'm gonna go ahead and compress the spring and work our cable end. You wanna lock that in, like so. You wanna pull this cable here because we have to get this barrel end into this unit here. And use our pliers. Pull that as far as we can. Put our locking pliers on here so it doesn't retract back in. Insert this into a little bracket here. And then release that. On the backing plate, there's going to be six contact points where your parking brake shoes make contact. You want to put a little bit of grease on these spots here. You don't want a ton on there, just enough to help reduce friction. We're going to install our rearward brake or parking shoe here. I'm going to go ahead and line this up. Install our pin through the backing plate. Go ahead and line this up. I'm going to make sure that this pin lines up in this notch. I'm 
like so. It's going to install our inward spring alongside towards the back. Get that hooked in. I want to go ahead and get that installed on our other shoe here. Once we have this hooked up and our inboard spring is installed, let's go ahead and stretch this out. Let's get our pin put in through the back side here. I'm going to take our adjuster here, I'm going to put some grease on it. Let's go ahead and thread our adjuster on. What I do is I just wipe off any of the excess grease off the front side of that adjuster and just put it back on the other side. Slide this on. Just by placing this in position, it'll assist us in getting this pin and clip installed. We have our upper spring here. Install our lower spring here. We have our two lower springs installed, upper spring adjuster, and our two retainers. I want to go ahead, and just center the shoes, make sure our e-brake equipment is lined up properly in the bottom. Everything looks perfect here. Let's now go ahead and install our axle. You're gonna take your axle and you're gonna feed this in. Now, as you go in, there is gonna be another seal and bearing on the inside so you kind of have to lift up on it and guide that in properly without damaging the other internal components. You want to go ahead and clean out your differential. You can use some brake clean in here and kind of flush this out. You want to make sure that you have a good clean platform to work with. Make sure that you get all of that brake clean out. Your next step is to go ahead and clean the surface of the differential for your cover to mount. We're just going to go ahead and use a blade and gently clean off any of the residual gasket material. Now once you've cleaned everything off, you want to go ahead and run over this for with solvent. Make sure that this is clean and dry. You want to go ahead and clean the gasket material off of your differential cover. You can use a blade, clean this up, and then we're going to wipe that down with solvent just like we did the differential. I want to go ahead and we're going to apply some RTV to our diff cover here. I want to go ahead and spread this around. Once we have this spread evenly all the way around, we're going to let it set up for about 10 minutes and then we'll go ahead and install it. Install your C-clip on that groove on the axle. And while you're holding it, go ahead and grab the outside axle and pull that through so that locks that clip in place. You want to go ahead and install our pin into the carrier unit. Now our bolt hole is up on the top side here, so I want to go ahead and install this here going up. Just work that spider gear so that that pushes through. Pop that up and in. I'm going to go ahead and grab that drive shaft. And we're going to rotate this. 
that this lines up. We want to make sure that our pin here make sure that our hole here is lined up over here. In our case we can simply just take a pick and simple just kind of rotate that. Go ahead and thread that pin in. Now just to be on the safe side I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of blue Loctite on this pin. We do not want this to back out and let's go ahead and tighten this down. Now you want this pin to lock into place. You want to go ahead and you want to make sure that it's nice and tight. Clean off any excess of the Loctite. Let's go ahead and line up our cover here. Get that in a place and I'm going to go ahead and get the two upper bolts started. It'll pretty much line up all the other bolts. Let's go ahead and get these all installed by hand first. And then we'll go back and snug them all down. Let's get and torque these down to 12 foot pounds. We do this all the way around. Now at this point, before we fill the differential, we want to go ahead and let that gasket sealer cure. So we're going to say, let's set it up for about an hour from now. I'm going to come back and we're going to fill the differential. Now on our caliper unit, we have our sliders right here, one on each side. We want to go ahead and dis disassemble these here. I'm going to slide that boot back, push that slider pin out. I'm going to do that for the other side. I want to go ahead and work the boots out. Might require a little bit of effort, but this is a single boot. It slides out like that. Do the same for this side here. You want to be careful not to damage these here. You want to go ahead and inspect these here. So open them up, spread them, look for any tears or anything like that. Both of our our bushings here or our insulator sleeves here are in excellent condition so we're going to reuse these. We want to compress our piston back in to the caliper. So gently going to work this in. You want to make sure that when you do this here that the piston is compressed all the way in. Okay, release our tool. I'm going to use my brass bristle brush and clean up around the top here. I'm going to take off any scaly rust. Now these holes here where the rubber bushings and the sliders go, you want to go ahead and check that out 
check out both of those bores there to see if there's any scaly rust or anything built up in there. If there is rust in here, it can cause resistance with the slider pins and cause this to bind up, causing break, uh, abnormal break wear. So make sure that these are cleaned out inside here. You can run a little bit of sandpaper inside there, clean it up. And then we can go ahead and start with our reassembly. I'm just gonna take a little bit of grease and put it on the inside of the bore on both of these ports here. Not a lot, just a super thin coat. And take your rubber bushings here or your protective boots. You gotta work those back in. Pop those in. Do the same for the other side. I'm gonna take some grease, I'm gonna put it into the boot. Do the same on the other side. Take your slider pins and put some grease on those as well. Go ahead and pop those in, push them through. Do the same for the other one. Make sure that the pins are locked in to that boot. And just wipe off any excess grease on the outside. Before you walk away, make sure you properly anchor this here. You do not want that caliper to drop and pull on that flex hose. I'm gonna go ahead and install the rotor. Now what we wanna do is adjust our parking brake shoes on the back side. You can wiggle us around, you can see there's a lot of play here. We want those parking brake shoes to fit fairly snug so that that rotor itself is on there pretty tight. In order to do so, we're gonna go ahead and adjust this little sprocket or the gear on the top side here. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and rotate that gear down. What is happening here is by me doing this, it's causing the shoes to come out. It's gonna create a snugger fit on the inside of the brake rotor. And we're working this on, you wanna wiggle it a little bit. Still see there's a lot of play there. We can go ahead and adjust that. We're gonna to continue to do that until that rotor has less play in it. All right, our parking brake shoes are set. Let's go ahead and install our caliper bracket. Go ahead and slide that over. Go ahead and get both of these bolts started. Let's go ahead and install our inboard brake pad. Make sure that these notches fit into our slides here. Now these slide tracks are pretty snug, so what I'd like to do is just gently open up the retainer from the top and bottom, and that lets the pad pop in. Just gently twist out and pop that in. Do the same on the bottom. Okay, to bring your caliper over. You wanna make sure that your sliders are pushed out. That's gonna allow you to fit this into place. Slide this over. I'll go ahead and install our lower pivot bolt or our slide pin bolt. Get that started a few threads. And we'll go ahead and line up the top. Let's go ahead and get that one started. and torque down our caliper bracket bolts to 100 foot-pounds.
torque down our caliper bolts here to 11 foot pounds. I'm gonna go ahead and remove our fill plug here. We're gonna use a recommended gear oil to fill through here. I'm gonna to continue to fill it to the point where you can just put your finger in the fill port and touch gear lube oil. So at this point here, I'm gonna put our finger in and it comes out just on the end here. So it's just below the fill port, which is perfect. I'm gonna wipe down our cap here. And then go ahead and install our plug. Now that we have our brakes installed, you want to go ahead and hop into the vehicle, pump up the brakes, make sure that you can get that fluid into that caliper, and then install your wheel, and you're all set. Let's go ahead and line up our wheel. That lined up and let's go ahead and install our lug nuts. Once we have all these on, we're gonna go ahead and snug them down. Let's go ahead and torque down the lug nuts to 135 foot-pounds. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.